Ugh. I've been wanting to test headphones since the beginning of this channel, but I had to go to headphone school. I don't want to make vids that stink, and no one wants to hear a review from someone who's like, oh, these are the only headphones I've ever tried. You know, all, you know, go and buy them, Amazon link down below. So I researched so many reviews and bought up the pairs of headphones that reviewers kept bringing up. Sony MDR7506s, DT770, Herdo 600s, Bear Dynamic T1s, AKG, K712s, an Audio Technica M30Xs, and so on. You know, to get a baseline of what kind of sound and build quality you get for your money. Now, while I found some heroes, I never really found a villain. You know, I benchmark for the low end. Something to go, well, at least I didn't lose to the loser phones. You know, I got the dirty buds, but these are too easy, too low of a target for me. But there was a name that kept being mentioned in reviews, almost in a, yeah, we all know that sort of way. Famed for lacking bass. Well, that's something people hate, that's for sure. Famed for having very revealing high-end trebles, so like trumpets and cymbals can be really piercing. Ooh, that sounds villain-like. They bleed all your noise out so everyone can hear your music. So those of you anxious of your musical tastes are just tingling at the thought of using them on a bus. Uh, they aren't even that good for an office. You know, they let all the noise in too. Almost like they aren't even there. They aren't even designed for walking around, to be honest. And like, these honestly sound like the worst headphones ever. I bought them to be the whipping boy. Mate, it's the great. Rado SR60Es. I didn't read any proper reviews on these <laughs> at all when I first got them. I bought them purely on hearsay. But oh man, I was so ready. So ready to absolutely destroy these. I'd had my Bear Dynamic T1s and a nice desktop amp for some time at this point. You know, so I was riding high audio-wise, like a jerk controlling all the rules. You know, I didn't even give these a fair go. Like, I just got the dingus out. <laughs> Look, it's the case from the Patreon episode. Look, I, I cut a dingus hole. <laughs> I didn't do a very good job. Yeah, no flax, no losses files. Just smash into this with Spotify. Yeah, no desktop amp, which I've got plugged in, ready to go. Nah, mate, my mind was concluded. I wanted to hear these fail. You know, so I put them on and they sang to me. Like I'd never said a bad thing about them, even though they were listening the whole time. I, I can't describe the emotional roller coaster of literally grinning like a mad scientist at the possibility of hearing something bad out of these. I, I was so concluded that I was in for the best worst time. You know what I'm talking about? It's like watching Sharknado or Birdemic, right? You're purposely in for a bad time and ooh, you just can't wait. Yeah, well, imagine getting 15 minutes into the skateboard kid and almost being in tears from what you're experiencing. That's me with these! But you were meant to be awful. Why am I genuinely enjoying this experience? Yes, they bleed all your noise out. And yeah, they let all the noise in. But the sound stage, right? Which is the term for like how 3D and like depth it feels. These are so open, you can actually shine a light through them. Dingus, lend us some light. Look at this! right through them. And these ear pads just make it feel like they're just hovering there. No, they do not have head shaking bass. Like that's for dang sure. But the bass is so tight. It's like, poof. there's bass there. Yes, the top end is very revealing. These are the opposite of bass heavy headphones. So like, if you like bassy headphones, you'd call them strong. If you hated them, you'd call them, you know, muddy. If you hated these, you'd call them thin. But dang it, mate, these are special. Barkley. <laughs> there are going to be some tracks that might have a few top end things that stick out, but in the grand scheme of things, there is so much detail. I need to prove it to you. We're judging sound. That means the judge needs to come out. It's the Herdo 600s by All My Sennheiser. 9097, these first popped out, and they are still great headphones. A great buy. You can still get them today. Look, if you could draw sound, this is what the HD 600s look like. I know I explain this every single time, but hey, this might be your first video with me, and this might make no sense at all. That's why I wrote this at the bottom. Sub bass down here, regular bass. Look, most instruments honestly live about here. And the higher up the line, the louder that bit of the music is. And look, it's really flat. And you know, reference headphones, that's what you want. Uh, you know, roll off in the bass here. That's pretty typical for, for these style of headphones. All right, let's have a look at the SR60s. <laughs> I mean, here is really flat. Like, you know, getting into like the top end bass, that's why it still sounds nice and punchy. And, you know, most instruments would hear, but Whoa, mate, the great Alps of audio. It's got that roll off here, but it looks a lot like the, the HD 600s, really. But yeah, this is where the sparkly stuff is. So, yep, I got the mini DSP hears here, which are freakish ears on a stand, really. Um, you know, and I always got to mention the asterisks, yeah. You're listening through your headphones or speakers. It's going to sound like that for the most part, right? This is on YouTube, which is compressed to absolute heck. And also, these were recorded by me. 
an idiot. So many grains of salt, you'll get sodium poisoning, but hopefully it gives you a bit of an idea. Take a listen. So at this point, I had to know more. What what the heck is Grado? And honestly, that's when this gets worse. You know, as in better, because remember, I was looking for a villain, not a love story. This is a love story now. These are handmade in New York. No made in China here. I got more respect for tech companies that actually make their own stuff. Everything's just given to Foxconn. Pixels, galaxies, iPhones, MacBooks, you name it. It's all made in the same factory. Look at this headband. It looks really simple, but it's metal. You literally bend it to the shape of your head. So some people say, oh, they clamp a bit too much. Well, maybe just bend them out a little bit. Yes, the cable is a bit bulky, but it's really nice. And you can tell that these are handmade. Like you can tell like someone's crimped these. This is how they arrive in just like a really basic box like this. This really nice little cover letter, cause yeah, family run. It's a it's a really small crew of people. And it's got this bootleg Mickey Mouse looking cutout. <laughs> and these ones he just leaving like this. It's actually really nice. You've probably noticed another video that I got the hemp's. Yep, made by Grado. And check this out. Look, the same designs and the way they adjust, like it's simple, but it works. It means it's infinitely adjustable. And look, same style headband, only one is like in pressed vinyl, and this one is stitched with possibly the softest leather I've ever felt. So this is the box for these, right? You wanna see the box for these? Yeah, well, here you go. All they do is change the sticker. That's the clever way to save money. So instead of saving a buck away big company suit, which is to send it off to a country that doesn't have any workers' rights and works people to death, they saved money on the bits that just don't really matter. You know, stuff that they could share between their whole ranges, because it's about this. That's where the business is. So we're talking about how much they're saving money, right? Well, go on, how much do these cost then? 79 US dollars. Under a hunch. What? These sparkling goddesses handmade in New York. This nice big cable. I know it's a little bit inconvenient for a lot of people, especially with everyone going wireless. But as an audiophile, oh, that tickles me. And it turns out they don't advertise either. Only word of mouth. That's so righteous. <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, through the words of many, they wound up in my hands. <laughs> this is a love story, isn't it? But guys, the party piece. They dazzle me with music, but content and movies? Get out of here. The Mandalorian has never sounded so good. Like holsters, footsteps on gravel, the detail is amazing. Like AAA movies and series have music and audio on the level of top end music and orchestral tracks, right? Look how many names are in the credits for sound at the end, right? And with these, you hear all of that. So if you don't listen to music and want content headphones around the house, oh yeah, I'm not Done. These take so little power to run, it's less than Apple Dirty Buds. 32 ohms. So paint this picture. You and your partner laying in bed with the laptop watching your favorite series or whatever. Yeah, get a headphone splitter. Get two pairs of these. Right, you know, again, it'll be able to handle it because it's so low powered. They are so open, you can just freely chat like they aren't even on. You can snack so heavily and not get that awful in your sound. You know what I'm talking about. Have a mouthful of chips or something crunchy and block your ears, all right? And you all look insane because I know a whole bunch of you are trying this now. And yet, with all this, you're hearing the movie like it's a studio theater. Two pairs of these and a splitter is less than a crappy TV soundbar and subwoofer. I give friends like tours of my headphones. You got the rack of the gods and the scrub tree. Yeah, at the end of the tour, I always come back to these because I'm curious and folks still love them. And and that's the hard test there, right? You know, after hearing the K812s, after trying the $1,000 LCD 2s, people come back to the sub hunch grados and they still love them. That's huge. Legit, these are the headphones that read so poorly in print and in graphs, but then absolutely dazzle everyone that wears them. I've bought so many pairs of these as gifts for friends because of how great they sound for the spend. I usually keep a pair in stock around here. Oh, the handmade New York, that's so cool. I'm such a sucker for a good story, especially in this vicious world where big companies make the worst crap. So through my vicious search for an enemy, I have now found a best friend. Cause where do these guys live, hey? On the rack of the gods or with the scrubs? Nah, they live hung up in my room where I can grab them easily. There's no higher praise than that. These hang out with me. I was such a fan of these that I bought some 325s immediately afterwards. How cool do these look? So retro. And after that, I bought the hemp's. The hemp's are probably the best out of the three. 
and they need to be for how much they cost. These are super, super good. They got a little bit extra base. The top end isn't as sparkly, but I, I still really like these. They're just so light. They're so sparkly. Oh, they're so chuckable. Black and silver. Mm. Look, it looks like a racing car tire. I love that. So... Definitely my top rate if you ever wanted your first pair of open backs. And so many of you have written out to me to say that you grabbed them and that you love them. I'm so glad because Grader only works through word of mouth. And dang it, if it ain't my pleasure to shout them out as much as I can. They're making wonderful stuff. Um, spring for the 80s if you can afford it. That seems to be the recommendation. But hey, I love my 60s. Don't feel that you have to. Uh, and... That's it! I mean, this was an extra vid this week. My other vid was the Beats by Dre. And honestly, while running these, you know, I kept picking these up and going, it's about time I do a video on these, because, oh, heck. So thanks to my patrons, thanks for watching, and I'll, I'll see you in the next one. Well, this makes sense to someone. Certainly not me.